Hello, it's Jay here and welcome to this new tutorial video. We're continuing on where we'd left in our last lesson and here's what we've done. We'd created two switch blocks to handle our weather states. But now we're going to create a timer. So every time the timer reaches zero, it will swap to pick weather and then pick weather will activate one of the weather states and of course the timer will then reset so the first thing we need to do is to come to the top here and we'll create two public floats and the first one is going to be switch weather timer and we can give this a value of zero and we'll put it into comments and we'll just say switch weather timer equals zero and the next public float will be reset weather timer and we'll give this a value of 20 F and we'll close the line off and we'll put it into comments and we'll say defines value to reset weather timer to. Now obviously in our final project or when you add your dynamic weather script to a game project this number needs to be a lot higher but we're going to keep it at a low value for testing purposes while we create the script so please bear that in mind it's only a value of 20 just for testing purposes and now we can go on and create the timer itself. Now the code for the timer we could put in the void update. There would be nothing wrong with that. But what I like to do is actually break down code into separate functions and then just update that function from the void update. I think it's a it's a cleaner way of writing scripts. Now, you know that's personal preference and um, you know other people may not want to do it that way but it's the way I work so you know please bear that in mind you know if you just want to put all this code into the update function that's absolutely fine but I'm going to create a new void and we're going to call this switch weather timer and just like we normally do open close brackets open and close and now all we need to do is actually call that function from our void update and we can open close brackets and close the line off and we'll put it into comments so we'll say updates our switch weather timer function and we can then come in here and the first thing I'm going to do is put in the debug.log we'll open and close brackets, we'll close the line off, we'll come inside the brackets and put the speech marks and what we'll do is we'll just copy in the name of the function and we don't need to comment this, what the debug.log will do it will give us a message in our console once we have the script complete and working we should get a little message there now I like to do this again for testing purposes so we can test that each part of the code is working perfectly and then we'll come down I'll create a line break and now what we need to do is say switch weather timer and now we're actually going to create the timer itself and we're going to say minus equals time dot delta time and we can put this into comments so we'll say decrease weather timer and let's go through this so don't worry if it has a value of zero we'll be fixing that as we fill out the rest of the block but once it's actually been reset to the value of 20 
is then going to minus it by time dot delta time, which means it's just going to count down in real time. Uh, we could put that in the comments. And for the purposes of this script, time dot delta time is absolutely fine. And we'll come below. And now we need to create some if statements. So we'll say if switch weather timer is less than zero, we'll close brackets. We need to make the switch weather timer equal to zero. And we'll close the line off. And we'll put this into comments. So we'll say if switch timer is less than zero and for this line then switch timer is equal to zero. So it just prevents us from getting a negative value so every time it tries to count down to a minus figure this will just make it reset to zero. And we'll put the other if statement in. So we'll say if switch weather timer is greater than zero. We'll close brackets. And then we can just call return. And again, we'll put this into comments. So we'll say if switch timer is greater than zero. And we'll come to this line into comments then do nothing and return so this line of code means that if the switch weather timer is greater than zero it doesn't need to read the rest of the block the rest of the code we're going to put in it can just continue counting down and that's just um, a very simple way of optimizing code we're making sure it's not going to read any bit of line of code that isn't necessary at that particular moment. But of course, our switch wave timer does equal zero, so we need to fix that. And we'll come in here and we'll we'll fix that. So we'll say switch wave timer is equal to our reset wave timer. And we'll put this into comments. So we'll say switch timer is equal to reset time. So if it's greater than zero, it will just keep counting down. But if it is zero, it will make it equal to 20. So when the script first starts, it will realize this you know it's only zero so it will skip over this line of code because it's not greater than it's only zero and come straight here and make our timer equal the reset time and then of course it will come back here it will start counting down while it's still greater than zero it will just return it won't reset itself again because of this bit of code here but once it does equal zero, or tries to go less than zero, just equal zero here. And now we need to put in some code for what happens when it does hit zero. And we can put this in between here. And we'll just say if our switch weather timer double equals zero, and close the brackets off, so we'll put this into comments. So we'll say if the switch timer is equal to zero, then we need to do something. And what we need to do is actually switch our, out our weather state. And the way we do that is we call that underscore weather state, and it's going to be equal to dynamic weather. The name of our script and we're going to say dot the weather states it's what we've defined here and here 
and I'll just come back here dot and we're going to set it to pick weather and we'll close the line off and we'll comment it so we'll say if the switch timer is equal to zero then switch our case block to pick weather and we can just save that off and I think we're going to leave it here for this lesson and um, we'll go through all of this again as we continue to fill out the script so please don't worry if you um, don't understand everything completely and as always if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below I always try and read the comments and uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, reply and answer any queries you have and I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time bye for now